Hi, I'm Jen McGillis, one of the co-owners of Pro Ergonomics, an ergonomic consulting company based in the Toronto area. And I'm also a registered kinesiologist and certified professional ergonomist. And I'm here to talk to you today about working from home. So we know that there are some benefits to working from home. Oftentimes there's a bit more flexibility. The workplace doesn't need maybe as much physical floor space. Uh, there's no commuting time. There's some really great things about working from home, but it's not without its challenges either. And that specifically comes when we start to talk about the ergonomics of our at-home setup. To be successful at home, our best strategy is having a policy or a plan sort of mapped out at the beginning or at the onset. Now, many of you have had employees working at home for months on end, but in, case, in this case, we're not necessarily talking about permanent work from home. We've been talking a lot about temporary work from home, but I know a lot of workplaces are looking at this as a much more permanent or long-term solution than they originally thought. And so that necessitates a plan. And that plan should include a, a policy of some kind, right? And that policy policy should map out work from home expectations in terms of hours, reporting, uh, project completion, etc. There's lots of things that can go into that plan. But one of the pieces of that should be the expectation about how ergonomics is managed in the home office. And so every workplace tackles this a little bit differently. We have clients doing it in all kinds of different ways. One, probably the most common approaches that we see are number one is that the workplace handles all of it. So they provide the folks at home with all the equipment that they need. So they have mapped out, okay, you're going to get a chair, a keyboard, a mouse, a monitor, you've already got your laptop at home, we're going to provide you with everything. Uh, other workplaces are saying it's entirely up to the employee's uh, responsibility to have a home office set up. So we've given you the laptop, you can work from home, but you are responsible for any other equipment you may need or want. And then we see other workplaces doing a bit of a hybrid approach is what I'd call it. They are maybe saying, okay, we'll provide some equipment or perhaps they're saying we'll give you some money towards purchasing of equipment that you might need. So, you know, we'll give you a spending account of $500. You need to purchase what you, uh, what the items you need in order to achieve ergonomic setup using that money. Now that said, we know that employees are working on all kinds of uh, different workstations using different chairs and different equipment in order achieve ergonomic setup. And so what we also need to provide employees is that secondary piece. Yes, we'll give you the equipment, but we need to teach you how to set it up. Or I'm going to give you a spending account. You've got $500 to buy what you need, but what is it that an employee needs, right? We get a lot of weird questions and people are looking at buying some very gimmicky things. It would be better to map out for that employee that they need a keyboard and a mouse. And these are recommended options uh, from Staples where we get a lot of our equipment or they need a chair. Uh, and these are the criteria that that chair should have. So we want to give them more guidance. Another key piece here is the due diligence part. As an employer, we need to make sure that the workstations uh, people are using at home, now this is an extension of the workplace and it's our responsibility to ensure people are working safely. So we need to figure out a way to make sure that we are confident or evaluated or assessed their home office from an ergonomic and health and safety perspective. So what we're seeing as best practice in this area is that employers are providing employees with a self-assessment tool or conducting an assessment with them. Uh, and that is either reviewed maybe by a health and safety professional or the employee's manager to identify, you know, that A, guarantee or com confirm that they have the equipment that they need as spelled out by your policy. And part two, to confirm that there aren't any outstanding issues, that they're not struggling or having any challenges that we need to be addressing. The final thing to consider is those challenges. So you have an employee who, uh, you know, I was working at home for a while and all of a sudden reports that they're having an ergonomic injury. So they're having some wrist pain or some low back pain. And so now you need a process in order to how to accommodate them in a non-traditional office space, right? This is not your traditional office. You don't have as much control over the equipment that they have or how they set it up. You don't see them every day. So we need to have a plan in place as to how we complete that accommodation. We're still responsible. It is still the workplace as an employer we're still responsible for that accommodation. We need to assess their, uh, their overall setup, determine what equipment or changes in terms of setup they need, uh, and then provide them with that equipment uh, as per the guidelines of our policy and procedure in order to make sure that they are properly fitted and therefore uh, supported and healthy at work. The great news is that with some good ergonomic interventions, there is no reason that people working at home can't be working healthy and safely. And so we just need to make sure we have a plan and a strategy in place in order to make that possible.